Do you know the reason why God cannot trust many people with his anointing is because they are not... Welcome to Kingdom Mirrors TV. On this channel, we post edifying content for your spirit and daily living. Kindly like, comment, subscribe, and turn on your post notification to get notified each time we post. Thank you, stay blessed, and enjoy this video. Do you know the reason why God cannot trust many people with his anointing is because they are not set apart to look beyond themselves and to see Jesus lifted. I think it was in Lagos or so I was teaching, was it yesterday now or day before yesterday? And I was telling them, I said, you know, not every closed door is demonic. There are certain doors is God that closed it by himself as an act of his mercy because he has weighed you and found out that if that door is opened, the, the existence of the flesh within you, there are people no matter how they fast and pray for the prophetic, they will not receive that grace. Do you know why? Because if you actually receive the creative dimension of the prophetic in anger, you will cause and kill people because you are angry. You will kill more dead bodies. You will be cooperating with Satan because of anger. So God will rather withdraw it until that intimacy with the Holy Spirit and that transformation is there. There are many people, including preachers, there are certain anointings if God gives you today, you will not pray again. Why will you pray? When people will travel from several nations and will pay everything to come and meet the great man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman, what do you need prayer for again? What do you need fasting for again? Can I tell you this? If it is the anointing you want to receive, it's more than your money. You can drop your seed and God says, nonsense, carry your money and go away. It is your heart I'm looking for. Prayer and fasting is important. But let me tell you, before your prayer and fasting will make sense and have value in the spirit, your heart condition must be right. The desire and the desperation to see Jesus revealed and glorified in your life. Do you know, you always hear me give this example. Imagine that God opens your eyes to the prophetic and a millionaire or a billionaire billionaires are all over your church or your ministry you literally can look at them and God opens your eyes and you see what they have in their account you've already bought sharp sand to build your house and you are limited there's there's no money you've calculated everything your engineer has told you 300 million will build a solid structure for you and the people trust you that's when you will know whether you are saved or not because one speck spectacular prophetic word and you see human beings when they trust you they become vulnerable to you sincerely you can tell someone look you have one billion two hundred and fifty thousand ah yes that's true oh yeah the other part i won't touch the one billion but that other slice <laughs> give on to caesar what you, know, you can twist anything and just because you are talking and the person is falling while you are talking does not mean it is God that is behind it. You see, I told you that you can misuse the anointing. There is a level of charismatism that the anointing brings. There is an aura. It's a fragrance. It can attract everything to you. That is the reason why people have to be dead to self. Are we together? Consecration and intimacy proverbs 23 and verse 26 this has become an anthem in my life and i'm praying that someone will finally get that revelation please look up my son give me mine give me thine many people are giving god offerings many people are giving god pulpit god does not want your pulpit he's not looking for your offering your tithe all of those things are secondary let me tell you sincerely if you want power with god koinonia hear me what God wants is your heart I can tell you by the authority of Scripture by the privilege of learning from the fathers and by my own experience if you are genuinely anointed genuinely anointed of God there is almost a godlike worship that people can bring around you because of the all-surpassing manifestation of the excellency of God in your life. Even you, sometimes you will look at yourself and say, my God, who am I? 
I know what the anointing can do. Believe me. And if you are not broken before God, and especially our generation of ministers, small grace here, yes, small anointing, and that's it. You see people misbehaving all around with the anointing. Small prophetic, small apostolic, and all kinds of things. And God just withdraws the more he wants to give you. Because when God tests you with it, you are rude, you are lawless, you are indisciplined, you are, you, are, you are rebellious, you don't have any regard for authority. God says, no, this little we've given this guy, let's leave it there. If we multiply this anointing, you will kill everybody. It means people will start kneeling down, lick your shoe, worship you, call you king of kings, then they will receive healing and go. Another person will do that kind of thing. Go and read the stories of people, I'm not being sarcastic, who did not allow God to walk on their hearts. Preachers, let me encourage you, co-laborers in the gospel, let's be careful how we impart graces on people. Just because people are committed and their hearts are open does not mean they are prepared. Let God vet them so that you do not anoint people who will be a casualty to you and others. History has taught us a lesson. Anointing people unprepared will always lead to casualty. We are all students in the school of the spirit. Don't get me wrong. It's like carrying your car and giving your 12 or 13 year old child the way children are brilliant now one can even drive with his eyes closed children are have mastered the art of surprising everybody but the chances are excellent that that child he will most likely be the only one with that car among his contemporaries and his pride not incompetence that will kill that child do you know what it means to carry the grace that grants you access to the destinies, the loyalty, the finances of people. It was a father in the Lord, Baba Adeboe, who made a statement one time, and he said, by the grace of God, if he needs a shed today, by the privilege of the influence God has given him, he can make one statement and say, brethren, I need a shed. And he said, literally without exaggeration, his size can finish in the market because everyone will want to go and do you know what it means to have that level of influence don't tell me i will be fine are you seeing why god works on our hearts you can speak to someone and say in the name of jesus christ may the lord lift you and in two weeks he comes back he has become a billionaire and the person comes to you as a billionaire and say man of god i'm still your boy oh good news to the ear of a preacher a billionaire is your boy are you learning tonight while you are laughing please make sure you understand what I'm saying God demands death to the flesh if you must carry genuine power billionaire is your boy and can say sir it looks like you are not happy is there any problem what can I do for you and Satan comes to stand by you and says is this how you are going to allow remember your childhood remember how you suffered now is your chance and yet the Spirit of God tells you do not touch one naira from that man rather sow into his life and bless him and you say I reject that spirit that that the spirit that is not an economist to use your brain and know that this will flow from I mean Can you be so anointed that God places you in the midst of greatness and you still have self-control? There are many wealthy people today who run away from churches, respectfully speaking, because they won't let them rest. Once the preacher is preaching, he's looking at everybody, but they know who he's talking to. And the people say, please, it's not a cause to be blessed. That's why most people don't testify. Because they know it's a risk. Oh, this is what God has done. We just floated two aircraft, I mean, one estate and all of that, and the preacher is clapping. And the man knows exactly what that clap means. <laughs> See, I, I made a vow and a covenant that by the privilege of God's grace, I'm not saying it by the strength of the flesh, this ministry will never inconvenience anybody because of tea and bread. If God will not provide the wisdom to fund this assignment, I will honorably go back home and sit down. It's better to sit down and not do ministry but have your integrity 
Are we together now? Consecration and intimacy with God. Number two, what is the second key that governs the manifestation of the anointing in your life? Honor to the word of God. If you do not live by the principles of the kingdom, honor to the word of God. If you do not live by the principles of the kingdom, you will never access the anointing. Please write it very quickly. Honor to the word of God. In Proverbs 23, verse 22, the B part where we just read, he said, my son, give me thine heart. Proverbs 23, 26, it says, and let your ears, your eyes observe my ways. John chapter 1 and verse 3. John chapter 1 and verse 3. He says, And without him, the word, all things were made by the word. And without him, the word was not anything made that was made. Are we together? Even the power of God hides in his word. Habakkuk chapter 3. It's become an anthem here too. Habakkuk chapter 3. We'll start from verse 3 and 4. God came from Taman and the Holy One from Mount Paran. His glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise. Verse 4. I wish we could have verse 4 in Amplified. Otherwise, no problem. It says, and his brightness was as the light. It says, rays streamed from his hand. And there, in that sun-like splendor, was the hiding place of his power. There is a relationship between the word of God and the power of God. The second key is honor to the word of God. I submit to you that I have a problem with people who manifest power and I cannot see in their lives honor for the word of God and the principles of the kingdom. If you manifest power and you do not have honor for the word of God, you deserve to be suspected. Are we together? Because it's like seeing somebody with a child who you never saw pregnancy. Are we together? Your stomach was as flat as my own now and then immediately you just drag a child. No, we have a right to say whose child is this? And it's not maybe surrogacy or anything. You say it's my child that was pregnant. We need to examine that kind of pregnancy. That's how the word is and miracles on the supernatural. If you do not have honor to the word of God, we look at your life and we do not see that you understand the word of God. Believe me, do not blame people if they suspect the manifestations that come through your life. The word of God gives credence to the outworkings of his power in your life. Are we together? Number three. What is the third key that controls spiritual empowerment? Prayer with fasting. For me, it's not just prayer and fasting. It is prayer with fasting. The emphasis is prayer. The fasting is an accelerator. Prayer with fasting. Luke chapter 4. Very quickly, we'll look at verse 1 and 2, then we'll go to 14 and 15. Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 4. 1 and 2. The Bible talks about Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost. So he was full of the Holy Ghost. He returned from Jordan and he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Verse 2. He says, being 40 days tempted of the devil. And the Bible says, in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he was afterwards hungry. Let's jump for the sake of time to verse 14. You know his temptation, the three temptations and all of that. And the Bible says, Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went about a fame all the regions round about. 15. It says, and he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. If you want to walk in genuine spiritual power, the facilitator of the anointing is prayer with fasting. There is nobody I know who genuinely commands the supernatural who is not a student of prayer with fasting. There are wrong fasts. There are religious prayers and fasting that does not carry any power. It's just a show of religiosity with no... It's just for health benefits. 
but there is the kind of fast God has commanded and then according to James chapter 5 there is the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man that avails much it, it has tremendous power dynamic in its working amplified says right for reference James 5 from verse 13 to 18 James 5 13 to 18 Are we together? The last now. The last key. Are you ready? The last key is impartation. Impartation. You want to access spiritual empowerment. You want to access the anointing. You need impartation. What is impartation? A system of transference of spiritual possibilities. Impartation is a way to transfer the power of God, to transfer the possibilities that are in the Christ through the Holy Spirit to you.